Yeah, so there you go. Well, how about I pray right quick, all right? We'll get yes. started here, though. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name tonight. Father, as we get together, please please know that we are loving on you, that we are here to learn whatever it is you have for us to learn. Father, we uh, acknowledge that you are creator of all things. And Father, please help us with tonight's lesson. Please help me as I give it. Please help those listening to, to just let it go. Just let it sink in the way you want it to sink in. And please let us all leave here just a little bit different. In your son's holy name, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Y'all doing okay today? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, okay. Wing. All right. Okay, all. I want you all to take your memory banks back to Genesis chapter 12. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anybody recite that from memory? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> all right, so... <laughs> Well, just think about it then. Okay, God told <laughs> Abraham to get out of the country. Oh, <laughs> hey, Is that a good on, synopsis? Right? <laughs> well, Genesis chapter 12, God made a list of promises to Abraham, didn't he? Okay, yeah. Okay. Among which was the promise that all his descendants would be the nations of the earth, right? Yes. Okay, that they would be blessed, wouldn't they? Now, the implication was in chapter 12 that Abraham would have children, right? But up until now in our story, <coughs> has Sarah had any children? No. No. Got a problem, right? Yep. We got a problem. He, but did Abraham, even though Sarah not have any children, did Abraham have an heir? Yep. Yes. Yep. What was the heir's name? Ishmael. Ishmael. Ishmael, right? Who was Ishmael born to? Hagar. Sarah's handmaiden. <coughs> Hagar. I always say... Hagar. Hagar. No, I say it the wrong way. Is Hagar the wrong way or the right? I don't know. I say Hagar. 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 Larry, how do you say it? I say Hagar. Hagar. Okay, gotcha. Maybe I'm not wrong, but it seems like I'm wrong. So, do you think by Ishmael, Ishmael being the heir of heir apparent at this point in the story, that the whole process of descendants coming that are going to be blessed, numerous as the stars, is kind of a half way to do it? That makes sense. It did not make sense the way I said that. Is that doing something halfway, having a stepson? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so that that's probably not going to fly, right? Doing something halfway, right? Okay. Well, let's read Genesis chapter 1. I don't have it in front of me. I ran out of sheets. Would somebody be willing to read Genesis chapter 1 for us? 21. Oh, I'm sorry, 21. I apologize. Yeah, I'll read it. 21. Adonai remembered Sarah as he said... As he had said, and Adonai did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the very time God had said to him. Abraham called his son, born to him, whom Sarah bore to him. And I can't say that word. Yes, Chuck? It sounded good. Okay. So Abraham circumcised his son, Yitz Chuck, when he was eight days old, as God had ordered him to do. Abraham was 100 years old when his son, Yitzchak, meaning laughter, was born to him. Sarah said, God has given me good reason to laugh. Now everyone who hears about it will laugh with me. And she said, who would, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Nevertheless, I have borne him a son in this old age. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham gave a great banquet on the day that Yitzchak was weaned, but Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom Hagar had borne to Abraham, making fun of Yitzhak. So Sarah said to Abraham, throw this slave girl out and her son. I will not have this slave girl's son as your heir, along with my son Yitzhak. Abraham became very distressed over this matter of his son, but God said to Abraham, don't be distressed because of the boy and your slave girl. Listen to everything Sarah says to you. Because it is your descendants through Yitzchak that will be counted. But I will also make a nation from the son of the slave girl since he is descended from you. Abraham got up early in the morning, took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child. Then he sent her away. After leaving, she wandered in the desert around Beersheba, Beersheba, 
When the water in the skin was gone, she left the child under a bush and went and sat down, looking the other way, about a bow shot distance from him, because, she said, I can't bear to watch my child die. So she sat there, looking the other way, crying out and weeping. God heard the boy's voice, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What's wrong with you, Hagar? Don't be afraid, because God has heard the voice of the boy in his present situation. Get up, lift the boy up, and hold him tightly in your hand, because I'm going to make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went, filled the skin with water, and gave the boy water to drink. God was with the boy, and he grew. He lived in the desert and became an archer. He lived in the Haran Desert, and his mother chose a wife for him from the land of Egypt. At that time, Avimelech and Pickle, the commander of his army, spoke to Abraham. They said, God is with you in everything you do. Therefore, swear, swear to hear, is that what that said? Uh, by God that you will never deal falsely with me or with my son or grandson but according to the kindness which with which I have treated you you will treat me in the land in which you have lived as a foreigner Abraham said I swear it now Abraham had complained to Avimelech 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 I know we talk about that name about a well which uh, Avimelech's servants had seized Avimelech answered, I don't know who has done this. You didn't tell me, and I heard about it only today. Abraham took sheep and cattle and gave them to Avimelech, and the two of them made a covenant. Abraham put seven female lambs from the flock by themselves. Avimelech asked Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven female lambs you have put by your, themselves? He answered, You took are to accept these seven female lambs from me as witness that I dug this well. This is why that place was called Beersheba, well of seven, well of an oath, because they were swore, because they both swore an oath there. When they made the covenant of Beersheba, Avimelech departed with Pickle, the commander of his army, and returned to the land of Plishtim. Abraham planted it. Oh, I looked this up too. Tamaris, Tamaris tree in Beersheba, and there he called on the name of Adonai, the everlasting God. Abraham lived for a long time as a foreigner in the land of Philistine. <laughs> nice job. Which is smart. Oh, no words in there, huh? <laughs> Would you all agree that with the introduction of Abraham into Genesis, prophecy has gone off the charts? Yes. Would you all agree with that statement? Yes. Okay. Do you realize that sometimes humans make mistakes about prophecy? They did. Let me qualify that statement here. It's not that we don't believe in prophecy. And when I say we, I don't mean necessarily you. I just mean we as human beings as general. It's not that we don't believe in prophecy. It's that sometimes we just don't really take prophecy literal enough. We kind of skirt around it sometimes. We don't really believe what we're reading. Like it's going to happen exactly as we read it. Question. I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts. Do you take God's prophecies as literal? What do y'all think? You may care to comment on that? I do, but I don't try to understand why and why it happened. Gotcha. So the why question. Of, I think a lot of people try to like look at the events nowadays and say like, oh I see that prophecy happen happening, which is very possible. So people have been doing that throughout history and I think we need to be very careful on saying like saying that prophecy has been fulfilled. Okay. Gotcha. At the same time there also can be multiple fulfillments for prophecies, like dual fulfillments and stuff like that. So Sometimes it could be right, it could be being fulfilled, but it could be more of a broader thing than what people say as well. So. Okay. That's why I don't really think about it as much as some people do. Anybody else? What do you think of prophecy? Do you think it's literal? I see it as kind of like, um, 
like when God makes a covenant. I mean, if God makes the prophecy and said, this is going to happen, it's like a covenant, and God doesn't lie. So what he says, I believe we should literally take that as true. Okay. So the outcome is not, might be something for debate, right? Like maybe what right. Nicholas was talking about. Mm -hmm. But for sure, if God says it's going to happen, right? It's, good. it's literal, right? Yeah. It's, it's good not happen. figurative. It's not hyperbole. You didn't say maybe you will be the father of <laughs> okay. nations. Well, be careful saying it's not like figurative because Christ spoke in a lot of metaphors, so you can't say it's always. The... I would not disagree with that, but the metaphor is right. not necessarily prophecy. Right. Right? He, not necessarily. He did speak about the future sometimes in <laughs> metaphors, but I thought, you know, it would be prophecy. Now, I think in this case, you know, Abraham, it was prophecy. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Alrighty, so, <laughs> alright guys, so, all of uh, God's promises about Abraham were literal, correct? Yes. Were they literally fulfilled? No. <laughs> alright. <laughs> we have another one. I don't even know what you Where's Mike? Right here. Oh, I didn't hear him, so. <laughs> well, here, let me get this out of the way. That's okay. But well, she says no. Does anybody else disagree with that? <laughs> I do, but question. that's just me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I disagree. But I don't even know okay. what the question What was the question again? Do you have an extra paper? I don't. We're out. So. Okay, that's fine. I'll listen. For okay. Well, we've already read the scripture, so okay. that's the yeah. type thing there. All right. Oh. I got the Bible. Okay. Here she goes. Oh, okay. All right. Do you have so, have all the promises that God made to Abraham about Abraham been fulfilled? Yes. Well, have they all been fulfilled? Yeah. Oh, sir. No. No. He hasn't got all of his land back. Right. <laughs> he hasn't got all his land back. Okay. Anybody else? I. That's what I was thinking. What she said. Gotcha. The okay. land hasn't all been returned to Israel yet. Well, regarding his son. At this point in our story, has prophecy been fulfilled? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Because before, before Yitzhak, <laughs> right? so, uh, it had not been fulfilled, right? He, he, did, he kind of had a son, but did he have a true heir? He did not, right? He did not, all right? So, but regardless of what us humans, or whatever us humans think circumstances could have been like back then, what that story is is pretty incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what, what's happening with Abraham and Isaac? Mm -hmm. It's an incredible story. So let's fast forward to today and, and talk about prophecy. Do you think it's looking dark right now for Israel? Mm -hmm. Do you think this is dark times for Israel right now? It's going to get a lot darker. Okay, how's that, sir? Because most of the tribulation period is... Uh, Jacob's trouble. Yeah, gotcha. So, even though it may get darker, is it dark right now? Yeah. Yes. I think it's been dark through most of history, honestly. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. For a long time, huh? So, yeah. well, for the whole... No, my day didn't turn to Christ. Oh, gotcha. So... What did you say? Because he did, they didn't turn to Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Gotcha. What's the status in Jerusalem right now? Well... Yeah, interesting is that's what I use. Interesting status. <laughs> yeah, that's what well, well, so even though it's dark, even though it can be considered a dark time right right now, do you think Israel is ever going to lose their land again? Well, first of all, let's talk. Are they back? They're back, right? Yep. Yeah. Are they going to lose it again? Yes. They could, but are they going to? Well, they. Flee to the hills because the Antichrist is going to come after Okay. So occupate, occupying, you're saying they may not occupy? Yeah. Gotcha. All right, anybody else? Comment? <clears throat> but will they lose their land? No, because mm -hmm. God said it's theirs. Okay, they will have it back. So they're, right. they're, it's never going to go away right. from Israel, right? right. Never going to go away. They may not be there for a while, but yeah, still there. Yeah, I think you can read in Scripture that after Egypt and Assyria, after Babylon and after the Romans, Israel is not going to lose their land again once they come back. And they're back. 
I, think, I, I would propose that they're back. And it really doesn't matter, does it, guys, how ungrateful Jews are? No. no. It doesn't matter how no. bad they treat God, does it? No. Because it's God's promise to them. That's it's right. not a two-way promise, correct? Right. That's the covenant. You know, yeah. that's what bothered me a little bit. Uh, God given the land is theirs. And the Christian people know that. But seemingly there's more non-Christians in the world today and they, and they don't care about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't understand. Well, they, yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean anything to them. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's a true statement. Wonder why, why did, I wonder why that is. Because they don't know the Lord, that's why. That's definitely a good reason why. Yeah. Huh? So, no, definitely. Perfect. Well, God kept His promise as He always does. And Sarah had a child, right? Yeah. A child named Yitzhak. That's how you say it. Yitzhak. Yitzhak. <laughs> what does Yitzhak mean? Laughter. Laughter. It means he laughs. Why? Because it was Cause funny she, that she had baby. Because they laughed, right? When, when God made the promise, they were like, ha ha, yeah, right. So, okay. That's Are you that. kidding me? <laughs> The promise, which was 25 years in the making, right, was for a child of destiny. Or better yet, you might say it's a child of promise. Now, I want you to park in the back of your brain here just for a moment. That In a little bit, we're going to compare Yitzhak to Jesus Christ. And you're going to see some eerie similarities. But park that in the back of your brain, because now I want to talk about something called God's appointed times. God's appointed times. Anybody care to try to define what that means? Time you put aside something's going to happen. Something is going to happen because God said it's going to happen? That would be an appointed time? Okay. Anybody else? Do you think there are God's appointed times in the Bible? Yes. Yeah. All over the place, right? It's all planned. They're all over there. God's timing, His appointed times, His timing, it's an important element of any prophecy that's happening. It's just as important as the details and the purpose itself. That's why you see the phrase God's set times or God's appointed times over and over and over again in the Torah. You also see it kind of here in Genesis 21. So a good example of God's appointed times would be the feast, the God's appointed feast. Feast of the unleavened bread. All those feasts that we in the Old Testament that we don't practice, right? Mm -hmm. Those are appointed times. God has said, you will do this at this time every year. That's an appointed, that's an example of a God's appointed time. So I have a question. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, I have a question. Regarding God's appointed times, whatever that is, I'm not pulling about anything specific, but regarding His appointed times, do you think man has the authority to change an appointed time? No. 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 I don't no. think he can. No. You don't think he can? Well, I think they can try, but it wouldn't be a good deal. It work. <laughs> so they don't have the authority to do that? No, no. we're not God. What God says is going to happen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, would you guys believe me when I said one of the most basic tenets of the Western Church doctrine is that the Western Church has given its leaders the ability to change or abolish God's appointed times? What? That would be a fair question. Dickie's like, what? Say what? Like Sabbath. <laughs> like I said this morning, you're not supposed to add or take away. Okay. Gotcha. All righty. What was God's first appointed time? Rest on sun on the seventh day. Okay. Anybody else? We've already discussed it. That's a clue. It was way back in Genesis chapter 2. That's a clue. Let me read it for you, okay? What was it? Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. And so the heavens and the earth were completed. And all their heavenly lights. By the seventh day, God completed His work which He had done. And He rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had done. Then God blessed the
the seventh day and sanctified it, because he rested from all his work which God had created in many. So now, when, some, when God decides to sanctify it, what does that mean? Set apart. Make holy. That means he made it holy and he set it apart. That would be an example of the first appointed time of God. The seventh day Sabbath, as Miss Linda said, right? In Hebrew, it's called the Shabbat. That's one of God's appointed times. It is regarded among Jews as the most important and holy of all appointed times. As we come across these appointed times or fixed times, we're going to find something in common with every one of them. And that's just what something Carl mentioned. They are sanctified. They are holy. They are set apart. They are God's set appointed times. Do you guys believe that it is God and God only who has the ability to declare something holy. Yes. Yeah. yes. Mankind can't do that. No. Are you sure? Yes. Yes. I don't have the authority. You do. Well, I don't think we can declare something holy, but we don't get to choose that it actually is holy or not. That makes sense. I mean, we do. Like, I can say God is holy. That, you know, I can declare that God is holy. And I think it's a good thing that I do do that. So I can declare some things holy and I can be right about it. But I'd say that God is the only one that can rightfully like, declare, like, like truthfully determine whether or not things holy or not. That makes sense. Anybody else? You hear what Nicholas said? Yeah. Yeah. We don't get to choose, but we can declare what is holy and what is not holy. In the New Testament, it says, "Be holy, as I am holy." But that's putting a lot of God in you and standing in His holiness because our righteousness is filthy rags. It says so. I think you can stand in the holiness of God, not have His holiness, not be above Him. But I think His holiness can be on you and in you. Does that make sense? I, 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 yeah, I'm not. I just want to know: Can mankind? Do they have the authority to declare something holy? No, no. They have a right. I hear a bunch of no's, but I think I heard kind of <laughs> right there, right? Using God's definition for holy, I think we're allowed to, but we can't choose for ourselves what is holy and what is not holy. Are you no people? Do you agree with that? And they have a right to challenge people who live a holy life, but they can't give it. We are. As, as saved people, we are given authority, certain authorities, like in the name of Jesus, you know, to make a declaration of healing, appeal to God to do certain things, you know. Um, but we do not have the but authority we do not. to say, say, make anything holy. Exactly. Right. That was what I was getting ready to follow up with. But I don't think that means that we have the authority to say, Oh, thou art holy. You're holy. Mm -hmm. Well, in the Old Testament, when they would build the tabernacle, only the priests could go in. And they had to um, be... Um, holy, if you want to say it, before God, and they had to be sinless when they went in there. When they went in there, they had pomegranates and bells tied to the end of the rope, and they wore a uh, rope so that if they went in to the Holy of Holies to plead for Israel and God's people, and that there was sin in their life, God would strike them dead, and then they'd have to pull them out. Pull them out, yeah. 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 So, right. Um, that's how I, come I think you could have God's holiness on your life and do everything right and then go plead in the Holy of Holies and stuff like that. And of course, that's all before God ripped the veil and said, you know, you can come directly to me. Mm -hmm. But, uh, right. yeah. So regarding appointed times, so drilling it down, regarding appointed times, does mankind have the authority to change them? No. no. Abolish them? No. Do they have the ability to make a substitution for them? No, but no. do it anyway. Do they have the ability to create a new appointed time? No. no. The ability, the authority, no. 
And how did we change from the Sabbath to the Lord's Day? That's what I wanted to ask you. How did we say? Right. They're changing it. They don't have the authority to change it, but they have the ability. Okay. What are your They'll do what they want to. Just like Easter being on whatever day they feel like. Okay. Anyway. Does that answer? What do you think, sir? Well, I don't have the answer. I'm just <laughs> thinking if God gave man the authority. So I'm thinking about Peter. Upon this church, I, upon this rock, I will build my church. I don't know if that's what it is, but... And I don't know how we got from the Sabbath to the Lord's Day. <laughs> what do you got mean, to? from the Sabbath to the Lord? Sabbath is Saturday. The Lord's Day is Sunday. <laughs> the reason for that, though, is because we Christ rose on a Sunday. That's why we celebrate and gather on Sundays. It's not because the Sabbath it has nothing to do with the Sabbath, actually. The reason yeah. is because we don't man practice, but Sabbath. God we don't practice sanctified the Sabbath. The Sabbath. <laughs> yeah. Yes. As so, a day of rest, not as a day of worship, I don't think. I could be wrong on that, you describe me. So we don't no, I don't the Sabbath and there is no doubt. I just read it to you. God said right here, I sanctify this day as being set apart from everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. That's a God-appointed time, correct? Yeah. We all would agree no man has the authority to change that. Right. right. So when is the Sabbath? Saturday. All right. From Friday when? night. Huh? Next. Friday night. Friday night. Sunday night. Sunday. Yes. That's the Sabbath. That's the Sabbath. Yes. Sunday is not Sabbath. Would we right. all agree? Yes. yes. Okay, gotcha. Doesn't mean we can't come meet together and worship. But would we agree that's not the Sabbath? Because that's not what God said was the Sabbath, right? Anybody disagree with that? Because I would love to hear. It. Go no. So the seventh day and Adventists are wrong. Why did they go to no. church on no. Saturday? Well, all right, two people talking. I'm sorry, what was that? I'm sorry, what? Why did they go to church on Saturday? Seventh day Adventists. Okay, I, I have no idea anything about that group. I don't know what they do or what they don't do. Oh, okay. I mean, if they if they say that Saturday, the the God mandated Sabbath is the only day to meet and go to church, they're wrong, aren't they? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're wrong. But if they say that the Sabbath is sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, they're not wrong. Right. Because that's what it is. That's what God said it was. Because they don't work on the Sabbath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some other, so anyway, all right, but anyway, enough about the, that part of it right there. Because at a set time, at a very set time, set, a time set by God, Isaac was born to Sarah, correct? Correct. As been instructed, Abraham circumcised Isaac on the eighth day, right? Yes. Ouch. The elderly couple, would it's fair to say they were overjoyed? Abraham just turned how old? A hundred. <laughs> And his, and his beautiful bride just turned how much? 90. 90. You think they were very overjoyed they had a baby? Probably, right? Because it's a miracle, isn't it? And they were very tired, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it a miracle that Abraham could sire a son? Yeah. At 100 years old? What about Sarah? Who never, ever, ever, even as a young girl had a womb that could produce life. Right. Several decades after menopause, she gave birth. It's a miracle, isn't it? Yes. They were probably overjoyed, or they were worried. I don't know. <laughs> if I was 100 and I had a newborn, I'd be worried, I think. Well, they had, what, 25 years to think about it? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Get prepared. We don't know if the physical state is the same as the one. Hey, we don't. Now either. But all we know is what we know. Right. So it's fun to talk about it that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they went into detail yeah, so much, I wonder true. what day he was weaned. That's a parable. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, very true. <laughs> the Sabbath of the Lord. Day. Day. Three or four years. What day was he weaned? <laughs> I don't know. We were told what year, but I don't think what year, right? No, it said the eighth day. For his, that's circumcision. That's circumcision. Oh, that's circumcision, yeah. So no yeah. matter how much of a miracle it was that Sarah had had a baby, is, isn't it a miracle that she even survived having a baby? Yes. Physically? Yes. In our terms. Nicholas yes. brought up a good point. We don't know what they were physically like back then. Yes. Maybe 100 back then is like 20 now. Who knows? But. Well, the fact that they lived a... 800, 900 years old. <laughs> well, they were definitely some old people back then, all right? 
But they seem, but you know, in the Bible when it talks about it, I mean, they seem like me, I'm old, you know, so evidently <laughs> they felt like they were way too old to be for this to be happening. Yeah, they were probably, I mean, in verses 6 and 7, it kind of shows they were probably dumbfounded. Yeah. What about the clan? What about the Abraham clan? All the slaves and all the people. Hundreds, right, that belonged to his clan. What do you think they were thinking? Hmm. Those old people just had a baby? <laughs> Is that what they were thinking? I mean, who knows, right? So, But in verse 8, Isaac was weaned, wasn't he? Yes. Doesn't say what day he was weaned, right? But no. He might be three or four years old, who knows? And Abraham, because of the weaning, had a great celebration, right? He had a banquet. But there was trouble brewing in the house, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Ishmael, still a much-loved son of Abraham, who was probably about 15 or 16 years old, somewhere around this time. Was he a parent? What, do you think he was constantly taunting his toddler brother Isaac? Yes. <laughs> probably, right? I mean, does brothers do that, right? Especially maybe when they're that difference in age. In one of the movies I watched, he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Do you think Hagar, Hagar was giving Sarah a hard time yes. about yes. this whole situation? Yeah. Probably so, right? Yeah. Why would she be giving Sarah a hard time? Because her son was born first. Yep. yep. Okay. Right. Well, and because Sarah's yeah. the one that told him to take her. Okay, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So there's, there's something, there's trouble brewing in the house, right? But for sure, Hagar's status was diminishing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Her standing in that family when Isaac was born was affected. Something, that's probably why trouble was brewing, if, you, if we could go there with it. Sarah would have none of this trouble, would she? Mm -hmm. And she insisted to Abraham that Hagar and Ishmael be banished from the clan, didn't she? They be gone. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you think Abraham was extremely troubled by this request from Sarah? Yes. yes he was. Yeah, wouldn't he? Was. Wouldn't you be? He loved Ishmael. Yes. I mean, think about your if that was you. Yeah. You would be devastated, wouldn't you? But wasn't yeah, Sarah... Does women have control over men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but God did tell him to listen to Sarah. So God had the woman. Yeah, honey. <laughs> Vicky's over here going... But wasn't Sarah simply carrying out God's will? Yes. That's what she was she doing, was. right? God had told Abraham to do it. Not to be concerned for the boy's welfare because he would do what for Ishmael? Give him a nation. He would bless him and keep him safe, right? Yeah, yeah. Besides, God said Isaac, not Ishmael. Isaac was the one who would bear the covenant promise, right? Yes. So what is this an example of? This is an example of something we've been talking about Parents, since chapter 1. Opposites. She says opposites. Anybody else? This is an example of what doing God does. He always does this. Separates, divides, uh, separates, and divides, separates and divides for his will, right? Because Ishmael and Isaac were separated. <coughs> they were separated. Now, there was a very good reason why God promised Abraham that Ishmael would be divinely blessed and would divinely prosper. Anybody have any idea what that very good reason is? Because he didn't have to born anyway. Okay. Anybody else? Well, let me, Ask him. let me run this by you and see what you all think. There were certain law codes written down in that era that have been discovered in antiquity. Written laws from that era. And this exact case has been discussed in those written laws. These written laws are known as the law, and research it if you want, law of Libet Ishtar. And here's how it worked. Abraham had the right to accept or deny Ishmael as an heir to his estate because Ishmael was born to a slave woman. Does that make sense so far? By all accounts, Ishmael had been accepted by Abraham as the heir apparent of the clan, right? 
Ishmael was to have been given the firstborn share of Abraham's very substantial wealth. And by doing this, his mother Hagar would have been to benefited greatly from this inheritance, right? Right. However, because Hagar was a slave, the slave's owner had, by law, at all times, the right to grant freedom to the slave. So the owner of the slave could grant freedom. Hagar legally belonged to who? Sarah. 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 When Sarah went to Abraham and told him to cast out Hagar and Ishmael, it was Sarah's legal right to do so in the written law code. Yes. However, when a slave woman was to be released by the owner, it was not the choice of her, but it was the choice of the father on if the child could be released or not. Does that make sense what I'm saying so far? If the children of the released woman was to be released with the woman, it had to be the father who did it. Sarah could not, could not legally order Ishmael out of the house. She could legally banish Hagar, no problem, but not Ishmael. Abraham's decision to order Hagar out was not his to make. He did not own Hagar. Sarah owned Hagar. But the decision for Ishmael rested solely on Abraham. So you can see how there's this trouble brewing in this house, can't you? Can you see the conflict Abraham must have been going through? He didn't want to do it. His wife was demanding it. But what happened? He did it. He did what his wife asked him to do. Here's Vicky over here. <laughs> so, he did it because God told him. <laughs> so when Abraham agreed to do as Sarah asked, Ishmael's inheritance vanished. Does that make sense? The minute he did that, his inheritance vanished. Ishmael and Hagar, in a moment, went from being extremely wealthy, because Abraham was a wealthy man, being extremely wealthy and having authority in the family to being penniless and homeless like that. This was not some vague legal situation that caught Abraham or anyone by surprise. This was their life back then as it was written in the laws. This entire scenario is based on this law. To comfort Abraham, God graciously promised to supply earthly portion of blessing that had just been taken from Ishmael. That's what he did, right? Therefore, we find that just as Isaac would produce 12 grandsons, the 12 princes called the 12 tribes of Israel, Ishmael would be blessed. He would be blessed with an equal number of tribal princes. And he would be blessed with a tremendous amount of wealth. That's Ishmael we're talking about. Ishmael received God's blessing. By his provision, he received every bit as much wealth as Isaac did. And I'm talking about material wealth. He probably received more material wealth than Isaac did. But the one thing Ishmael could not have was what? The one thing he couldn't have. God said, I'm giving you wealth. I'm giving you provisions. I'm, make, I'm going to make it right. What's the one thing God couldn't give him? The land. Mm -hmm. He couldn't give him the blessing. Mm -hmm. The covenant promise. Because he was not the heir to Abraham's. Isaac was. So Abraham obeyed Jehovah, right? And he sent Hagar and Ishmael away. You know he had to be hurting, right? Sending that boy away. He had, to be, he had to be crushed, I imagine. He loved Ishmael. Ishmael. He loved him. It says that he loved them. And he counted Ishmael as his only son for 13 years, didn't he? That was his guy. How did he do it? How did he send somebody he loved so much away? Could you do that with your kids? All you women in here, you moms are doing this. Because you know, right? How difficult that some must days. have been. Uh, some days. <laughs> yeah, some days, she says. <laughs> Only if God told me I had to. <laughs> it would be, be tough. It would be so, tough. That's so funny. 
So Hagar was on the verge of dying of thirst. But in verse 17, Malak Elohim called out to Hagar. What is Malak Elohim? Anybody remember? From our previous studies, we've talked about this. What is Malak Elohim? What is Malak? Malak means messenger. messenger. What does messenger mean? Angel. 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 Malak means angel. What does Elohim mean? Of the Lord. Of the Lord. Elohim angel means. of the Lord. Angel of the Lord. Are you talking to me? What? He heard the phone and I went to hear. Oh, no, I know. Okay. <laughs> so, the, the Hebrew version is called Malak Elohim. Angel of the Lord is what it says, right? So, in this particular case, either this was an angel, angelic messenger, right? Not a human messenger. Remember how we used to talk about that? Either it was an angelic messenger or it was God Himself. What do you think? Or I've also heard it, it might have been Jesus Christ. Is that God? That is God. Okay, I gotcha. <laughs> I mean, <it's> <laughs> All right. So, God in His Son form. Okay, gotcha. Nope, I understand. So, but would you agree it was either an angelic messenger or God Himself? It right. says angel of God. It says angel of the Lord, right? I don't think it was God. I think it was an angel of God. I okay. think it was angel. I, I mean, I take it literal. It does say angel of God. Okay, gotcha. I understand. So it's still, it's still the Lord's words, but that's why it's a messenger. Right, right, right. It's like when the prophets through the Spirit, the Lord's word through, you know, through them, you know. Okay, I understand. We do know that the messenger did not appear before Hagar, right? He simply called out to Hagar from where? Heaven. Up in heaven. So there's nothing that speaks of an appearance, right? It's voices right. from the sky. Is the way I envision it. Right. The messenger of God said that God had heard the boy, not the mother, heard the boy, and in the next verse said, I will make a great nation of him. Yes. True? Yep. As with the three visitors who came to Abraham a couple chapters ago, you remember the three visitors? Yes. Mm -hmm. The nature of this encounter with Ishmael and Hagar is also kind of mysterious, isn't it? Yeah. Was this an angel or was this God? Angels usually make it clear that they are doing the bidding of God, don't they? But this angel said what? I will make Ishmael a great nation. I will do it, said the angel. Huh. We can't know for certain, right? Really, we can't know for certain if it was God or an angel. I think it's pretty clear it's not. I don't, I don't agree with that. I kind of think it's God. Well, the, prophet, the prophet can say the same thing and speak in the first person for God in the place of God. And we say that God said it also. I understand your position. So, I don't agree. I think it's God. But that don't mean I'm right. I'm just saying I don't agree. I understand exactly what you're saying. The messenger, well, yeah. just, the messenger just tells the word of God. So it is still God's word. It's not God directly saying it here. Yeah. But God is doing it. So are the words, I will make Ishmael a great nation direct words from the person who's going to make him a great nation? Yeah. Is it the angel that's going to make him a great nation or is it God? It's God. So that's a good indication it could be God. Mm -hmm. I very much disagree with you. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so. well, and I didn't catch that until, and I've, now I've underlined it because above it says the angel of God, but it does say, I mean, that because I am going to make him a great angel, nation i can't imagine that that would be an angel saying it in those words if that's in history if a king told his messenger if he had messengers to go speak to someone the messenger would still speak on the authority of the king that's a king not god god is a king well, <laughs> that's reaching. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's in that context. I'm sorry, I, the two don't equate. I th I said this. We can't decide this. Yeah, I, there's two different. But I mean, there's here, something. It, it definitely uh, yeah. lends to a, you know, a man. I gotta think about this. It's, it's just, just fun for me. It's fun to think about. Yeah, okay, Jesus, Jesus Christ in the New Testament tells the people. If you know me, then you know my Father. Because right. the Father sent me. Right. And if you know the Father, you know who I am. So could Jesus Christ himself be the messenger sure. of God? 
Sure. Which he is Maybe. God. You know, he's yeah. God incarnate, but... Right. Uh, could he come in the form of an angel of God? Be I a messenger of God? Yeah. I think he could. I think he could. Be. <laughs> I don't think... But yeah, it's, it's... But a little bit on his side, I don't think God would classify as an angel because angels are... No, it's and I don't angels. either. And it says clear angel of God, which is a Mechlach, Melech, Elohim, whatever. The angel of the Lord. But Elohim is that? a name of God as well instead of just Right, God. right. <laughs> Absolutely. It is a name of All right, guys. Well, I can't decide it, right? right. It's just something fodder for us to think about here. Yeah. Hagar opened her eyes, right? Swollen from the dust, hand in tears, and she saw a water well had miraculously appeared. Mother and son were saved, weren't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. A promise was made from God that Ishmael would father a great nation. This was a reminder of a previous commitment to Ishmael, undoubtedly for Hagar's sake, right? Now notice, do you guys notice that there was no promise of land, just a nation? Right. To Ishmael. And initially, I thought of land, but when I reread it again, it, it says a nation, which could be, you know, Isaac had all these sons, Ishmael's going to have all these sons. They make a nation, a community of, you know, whatever, not necessarily land. Okay. You mean Isaac and Ishmael together? They hated each other. No, no, no. The... Isaac, as a part of being the heir, oh, was going to have all the of the sons. The nation there, and then Ishmael have a separate nation. Yeah. Okay. okay. Blessed with numerous sons, heirs, you know, but not necessarily land for Ishmael. Yeah. Doesn't say that. It just says a nation. So, was this promise to Ishmael a promise of land, or a promise of people groups? People. That's I what you're talking about, right? Yeah, and I think it's people right. groups. People groups? What you guys? What do y'all think? Anybody else? Nation. Nations. Nations. Nation so can you think of another people group called nations to support the theory that this is not a land thing, this is a people group thing? The word Gentile. Oh, yeah. Gentiles are also always called nations. The nations this, the nations that. That's a referring to a people group mm. type situation here. After this dramatic rescue and promise, the narrative skips to Hagar and Ishmael becoming desert dwellers, right? Yes. They lived in the Paran Desert, an area, if you can picture it, that lies roughly between the south end of the Dead Sea, so you have the Dead Sea, the south end of that Dead Sea, down to the Sinai Peninsula, or the Arabian Peninsula, as they say in some place. It was an, an area that would eventually become known as the Midian. Have you heard of that? You've heard about the Midian people around here? Yep, they're Arab. It's an Arab concept type thing. So. But it's definitely the Arab Peninsula. And this is going to be, this is going to become soon, or soon become the area of the Arab nations. That's what Ishmael is. Mm -hmm. But the people who lived in that time frame back then, they were called by another name. They were not called Arabs, they were called Bedouins. You've heard of that name, Bedouins, right? What are Bedouins? Bedouins. People who roam the desert. <laughs> That's what, what they, they do, all right? What are they called? Better ones. With a Better P as in boy. <laughs> Nomadic tribes. It, there you that's go. That's easier to spell. <laughs> yeah. so, I'd like you to check out these parallels between Isaac and our Messiah. Our Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. I got four of them. There are more, but I'm only going to mention four of them. Here's the first parallel. There was a very lengthy time between the promise of Isaac and his birth and the lengthy time between the promise and the birth of Jesus Christ. Is that true? Was Jesus Christ prophesied to be born yep. in the Old Testament? Isaac. It was a lengthy time for both between when it was announced and when it happened. Second parallel. The birth of Isaac and Jesus were both miraculous, weren't they? Isaac's because why? Of his mother's age and her dead womb. Jesus, because why? Virgin. She's a virgin. She's a virgin. <laughs> they were both miraculous. <clears throat> Parallel number three. Isaac's name was decided by God before he was born. And so was Jesus Christ's name. 
Interesting, isn't it? In parallel number four, God set a precise appointed time for Isaac's birth. He did the same exact thing for Jesus Christ. Interesting parallels, aren't they? I thought you were going to do the almost sacrifice of Isaac. Yeah, no, it, there's more to come. That's that's for the juicy stuff later on. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's move on quickly, and I'll get it over with here, to the saga of Abraham. And let's see if I can say it right, Linda. Abimelech. 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 I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if that's right. I was like, I know we knew when they said all the say oh. Now I can't remember. <laughs> in verse 20, we see Abraham was living in Abimelech's territory, right? Abimelech. Which had been offered to Abraham by Abimelech some years earlier. We talked about that last week, right? Abraham was more determined and stronger from this point forward, wasn't he? Would it be fair to say that the birth of Isaac probably gave Abraham more confidence in the ability of Jehovah God? Mm -hmm. Right? Probably gave him a confidence and a, you know, what, uh, oomph about him. He knew that the Lord was going to protect him because he kept his promises. He knew that if something would ha bad happen to him, that he would have his son to take over. So his confidence was probably building, right? His family was going to be able to move forward regardless of the status of Abraham because Isaac was now in the world. There was a dispute going on between Abraham's clan and Abimelech's people over some water wells. The wise, and this is true, the wise Abimelech was very aware that Abraham had a friend in the highest place, didn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> He simply wanted to settle this issue before what happened. Before God got involved like he previously did. You remember how God got involved with Abimelech before? He knew that in the back of his mind, didn't he? He's like, I don't want to mess with this again. <laughs> Let's settle this, as they say. Let's settle it in court. He did not want God threatening him again. So the negotiations ended successfully with a traditional barit. You remember what a barit is, anybody? We had it up here on the TV. Was it a promise? Covenant. Covenant. It's a promise. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm sorry. It's a brief ceremony. Abu Malak and his military commander who came with him, they went back to Gerard. <laughs> Our career, I think, is the right way to say it, right? We're told that Abraham stayed in that area. What was that area known as? It says in the last verse, doesn't it? Fifth. Land of... Of the Philistines. Yeah, the Philistines. The what is the land of the Philistines called today? Palestine. Palestine. And as we see next week, this is going to lead into some very interesting times in history. <laughs> Until next week, folks, that's all I got.